our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Space exploration, a boundless adventure and a very expensive one, which requires nations to join forces if they want to go where no man has been before. As an astronaut, in the first place, we are explorers. We go, we travel. This is what we like to do. We like to discover new things. We are curious. Space exploration is nothing else than the search for new things, than discovery, than satisfying our curiosity that we have started tens of thousands of years ago. The Atomium Monument in Brussels was built to symbolize an optimistic vision of the future, a modern technological world and a better life for mankind. Belgian astronaut Frank de Vin is one of those in charge of organizing the Europe and Space Exploration Conference taking place in the Belgian capital later this month. Its aim is to define a global vision and strategy for space exploration. Europe can't afford to miss out on the debate unfolding in the US under the new Obama administration, in Russia, in China, which has great ambitions, in India, in Japan. Europe must position itself in this international debate. The aim of conferences such as this one, which are political meetings, is to outline a vision which will enable Europe to find its place in the international space exploration debate. Decisions about a common space exploration policy will be taken at the highest level within the European Space Agency and the European Union. Among the targets, there is Mars, of course. But before heading to the Red Planet, there is our old acquaintance, the Moon. And let's not forget those mysterious celestial bodies roaming around our solar system, asteroids. But the cornerstone of space exploration is the International Space Station, which orbits the Earth at an altitude of about 400 kilometers. Life on the International Space Station is great. Of course, you can work there with your international colleagues, you can float, you can look through the window and see our beautiful planet. But you also work with all the people on the ground, thousands of people that support you. And at the end of the day, you really have a sense of accomplishment. Frank de Vin was the first European commander of the ISS. The station is a precious tool for scientific research and the ideal environment for tests on extended space travel. The ISS is the first step in this grand space exploration program. Nations have invested heavily in it and we must now get the most out of it by developing technology that will allow us to go even further and by developing international cooperation, perhaps even with new partners. So the ISS is a major contributor to global space exploration. After the ISS, the next milestone in the space adventure will be the resumption of manned flights to the moon. This cannot be done without international cooperation, both financially and technologically. In many ways, the moon remains a mystery to man. Little is known about its mineral makeup or about the presence of water and in what form. I would love as an astronaut to walk on the moon. But I would love to do so in an international context, together with our partners, so that we can go there to really use the moon, to exploit the moon, not just to go there and plant a flag like we did 40 years ago, which at that moment was an absolutely great program, but we should do it now on a more sustainable basis. We will build a base on the moon, it means that we will kind of have a station a little bit like now the International Space Station, but not just around the Earth, but on the Moon, that we can travel back and forth, that we can exploit the Moon with all the international partners for the benefits of all humankind. The next objective is Mars. The plan is to take advantage of the Red Planet's relative proximity to Earth every two years, when its orbit means it's just some 55 million kilometers away. 
Along with NASA, we have decided to use every opportunity. That means that every two years we plan to travel to Mars together. In 2016, then in 2018, we'll launch missions to Mars called ExoMars. The aim of robotic missions like ExoMars is to explore and especially to dig the Martian soil to try to answer two questions. First, is there any life on Mars? And secondly, where and in which form does water exist on the Red Planet? The most expensive thing in space exploration is transport, for example, taking a kilo from Earth to its destination. So if we can use materials on site to avoid having to transport water, air and all the things we might need to live on site, that would be much better than having to transport kilos from Earth. This is a field where the European space industry is already well ahead. It supplies some 50% of the ISS's life support systems and is well advanced in research on self-sustaining life in space. Every society that has stopped exploring has stopped progressing. We know this from history, so that is why we need to continue to explore. And Europe has a big history in exploration. Human beings have always wanted to explore new things, to look what is behind the corner, to see what is out there. This is what today we are continuing with space exploration, to go beyond where we have never gone before. In order to move ahead, Europe must speak with one voice, both politically and technologically. We don't determine the timing. It's a global issue and Europe must anticipate because it cannot miss the boat. Space exploration is a motor for the European space industry and has vital technological repercussions. In order to move forward, we need technological progress, which will help our industry progress and become more competitive. We need to define and acquire this technology so that when the time comes, Europe can say, well, this is our contribution. Europe has its place in this international project.